Hey everyone, so in today's vlog, we are gonna identify what's called a spiritual ego. What is it? What does it look like? Do you have a spiritual ego? Do you? Are you hanging out with friends that may have spiritual egos? So just to stay on course, when I say spirituality, what I mean is anything beyond the five senses. So your sixth sense, okay? Intuition for example. Now, if you're in the spiritual game, you're probably looking at the world as an observer. You you may have come to a place where you're question, questioning reality more, like what's real? What's truth? Are people service to self or are they genuinely service to others? And this is very hard to tell, actually. Extremely hard to tell. Service to self path and service to others path is, there's only a, people will act like they're doing a service for others, but actually when you get into the deep, their archetypes, very quickly you found, find out that they're service to self people. And these people may be, in the spiritual game, in the spiritual world, okay? So now let's just go back to the spiritual ego. Now I, about three or four years ago, I remember that I had sat down to meditate, okay? And I didn't wanna meditate. But then I was feeling guilty if I didn't meditate. So I would sit down and meditate because I felt like I had to, or I found myself doing things like I'd write in my journal because I kind of felt like I had to, you know, and I did this for some time, but I thought this was part of my spiritual growth and development. And you have to go through these types of things until one day I was driving and all of a sudden I, re I realized that that was my ego. The guilt was my ego tricking me to think that it's my soul. And the ego will do that. The ego will most definitely do that because the ego does not want to die. The ego wants power. It doesn't want to... If When your sixth sense starts opening up, and intuitively you start understanding that the outside world will actually bring you things when you're in true alignment with them and in balance the yin and the yang and the subconscious and the conscious mind are in this like union. The ego hates that because the ego is starting to drown. And if you can think of something drowning they're gonna be like this and flailing. And I've given this example before. They're gonna be flailing because they need to breathe. They need to stay alive. So they will go to the depth. And in this case, the ego, the depth it goes to, to trick you into thinking that it is your soul. And that is what happened to me. And I realized it was my ego and I was like, hold on. Hold on, the soul is purity, it's love, it's light, it's information, it's got everything that this, that source has. So my soul would never make me feel guilty for not meditating. My soul would not make me feel guilty if I didn't journal. What the hell is going on? And that's when I started breaking it down and realizing that it was my ego tricking me into thinking that it was my soul. And the path after that was a long one, which I'll talk in a different video. But this is, I mean, it happens and it happens a lot. And the way, I, the reason I wanted to do this vlog today is because I'm seeing it more and more in other people. So I have started identifying, I've started identifying um, spiritual egos within, within people that I hang out with. And what I'm coming to realize is that 
when people become argumentative because you know if you're talking about a spiritual topic and there's there's obviously they're not resonating with it and they're they become argumentative with with you and start asserting their ideas that's a spiritualist with a huge ego and that is the ego tricking that person into thinking that it's their soul and they're fully in it. Because when you're in it, when you're in that illusion, you don't even know that it's your ego. You have no idea. You have to come to like these sudden realizations to be like, oh my God. And they're, they're, they're like that actually. They're like, what in the hell? and then you play it backwards, but you have to have those experiences because if you didn't, then you wouldn't know what the ego feels like in an experience when it's tricking you to act like it's your soul in order to really know the divinity and the purity of the true soul steps, the true soul self. And honestly, I'll tell you really quickly, the divinity and the purity is when you truthfully are a service to others. In all oneness. It is when you start looking at other people and you start seeing God within them. You start seeing the source within them. No matter what they're doing, they could be honking at you, driving and just like road rage, but you still look at them and you're like, shit, that's what God's experiencing through you. Damn, okay. And you just keep going. You know, that is soulful. That's the difference. The ego, you can be spiritual, but the illusion with the ego and not knowing so you're still living a service to self life. You may be disguising it as you're living a service to others, others life. But if there's any sort of fear, anxiety, anything, or if you're praying because you need something, if it's always about you, that service to self, that's the ego, even, and, this is why I've, I've met so many spiritualists with such fat egos, huge, big egos, and they have no idea, no idea. Another thing that I've noticed with these people is um, when I'm watching them or observing them is that they always, they, they want to tell people w what is going on. They always have to, answer people's questions like they've got to be the know-it-all and I've noticed this with so many spiritualists because I have a lot of spiritual friends I mean like-minded people right and when I went through my own like realization of what the ego was and that holy shit I thought I was service to others but have I been service to self this whole time fuck I have oh my god God. And then going through this whole unraveling once again, and then leveling up the rung <laughs> up to heaven, right? Getting up one more rung and truthfully living a service to others type of life. You, because now you're up one more rung, you can look down and because you're detached from others, even spiritualists, you can see how hard it is to be truthfully soulful and truthfully service to others, how much work that takes and how much a balance, how much of the mind, body, soul complex needs to be balanced with the subconscious and the conscious from the mind, the subconscious and the conscious of the body, the subconscious and the conscious of the soul because all three have their own subconscious and their conscious mind, entity, energy, whatever you want to call it. 
So yeah, it was, it's just been on my mind. I've been wanting to do this vlog for a while because I want you to just become aware and do it to yourself, obviously. Don't, don't observe others before. Don't ever do anything or label, judge anybody because then it becomes a label or you're judging, right? Don't do that. But once you truthfully experience something yourself, then you honestly, you honestly, from your third eye, begin to see what it looks like in others because it's happened to you. So yeah, that's it. Just, just do some introspection. And you know, why is it that you're meditating? Ask why. What are you seeking through meditation? Why do you feel like you need to record your dreams? Why? Love you guys.